to Star Wars Month. I'm Kristen. And I'm Randy. Welcome to the Crossing King Garage with <laughs> Ultimate Fanfare. Provided by John Williams. Thank you. AKA oh, my dad. Yeah. And Today we have a very exciting video for you. Uh, we are counting down our top 10 non-Jedi characters. Now let me explain something real quick about this list. In the non-Jedi sense, I am including everyone who is force sensitive. So somebody like Chirrut from Rogue One um, will not qualify. Finn from the sequel trilogy, he is obviously force sensitive, so he does not qualify for this list. Also, don't come at me, but droids are also exempt from this what? list. What? We will do next year, I promise. Next year we will do a list wholly dedicated to the lovely, lovely droids of Star Wars. I R2 promise. R2-D2 is my hero. <laughs> R2-D2 is something. But um, next year we will highlight the droids, I promise. But this time around we are only doing the organics as Star Wars calls them. Interesting perspective. That means anyone who the Force isn't with. So honorable mentions will start there now honorable mentions are these characters that we Kristen and I now we love granted, them. it's our countdown so we really want to hear your comments is there somebody that we forgot is there somebody who is uh, non force sensitive that is really a great character but we're going to talk about some honorable mentions that somebody, may or may not fall into this list is there somebody from legends that we possibly left out from the Legends books and comments. Please, if there is somebody that we completely omitted, let us know. We like a lot of stuff about Star Wars, but we never, ever, ever want to make ourselves out to be Experts. authoritative with Star Wars. We know <laughs> that there are some of you out there who are much more force sensitive with regards <laughs> to all things Star Wars. And we respect that with, a, with honorable mentions and great respect, but let us know. We just want to know. We'd like to discover these characters for ourselves. But for today, let's get started with the countdown. Our honorable mentions. There are one, two, three, four, five honorable mentions. And they're going to be people that you may or may not recognize. Again, go and do your research and find out why these characters deserve being mentioned in our list. First is Finnick Shand. First, you want to elaborate on that one? She was first introduced in uh, The Mandalorian. She is played by Ming-Na Wen. She went on to have a starring role in The Book of Boba Fett and a cameo-ish. She appeared a couple of times in The Bad Batch in animated form, again played by Ming-Na Wen. We love The Bad Batch too, yes. but I digress. <laughs> Next is Poe Dameron. He is played by Oscar Isaac and is the pilot Han's type. He's the Han archetype in the sequel trilogy. Marva Andor. She is Cassian Andor's mother, played beautifully by Fiona Shaw. She stole every scene she was in in Andor I and agree. was a highlight of that show for me. I loved being able to like that actress so much because everything else I've seen her in, she plays a bad guy, so I loved being able to love her. We like her from the film with Dennis Quaid and Kathleen Turner, Undercover Blues. It's one of our favorites. We highly recommend it. Uh, Fiona Shaw plays the bad lady in this. Like Kristen said, it's so nice in Andor to see her be one of the flames of the rebellion, yes. uh, if we can. And it, it Fight just, the Empire! It's a, great, it's a great role, and she does phenomenally with it. Our next is Luthen Rael. Also from Andor, played by Stellan Skarsgård. He pretty much shows the darker side of the Rebellion. The, and as well as the sheer stress that must have been on all the leaders of the Rebellion, especially considering most of them were fairly well-respected people in the Empire who just realized they were working for the bad guys. Don't don't get us wrong. We don't think he's tapping into the dark side. No, no, he's no, no, just no. showing a some of the reality. I think that's a probably maybe a, a, a more interesting way of, of putting it. His role is putting the rebellion in a realistic framework, more so than any of the um, classic films four, five, and six. Um, maybe even to a certain extent, Rogue One ish, mm -hmm. which 
many people don't like, but we love the film. Love what uh, I want. Love the film. So, last but not least, Mon Mothma. She has been in, I think, every trilogy, as well as most of the iterations in animation. Mon Mothma shows up the most in Andor, though, and it yes. really does a very good job of fleshing out her character. She's and again, been played by the, multiple actresses, hence why I didn't. Listen. Yeah, some of the uh, some of the realistic trauma and drama that would have had to have gone on with some of the leaders of the rebellion. That's our honorable mentions list. We hope that you enjoy those. But now, let's get on to the top 10. All right, number 10, Bail Organa. Uh, probably best known as being played by Jimmy Smits um, in live action. I'm not sure who voices him in Clone Wars and Rebels. Please let us know down in the comments below if you know that off the top of your head. I love him. Jimmy Smits is a very good character actor. He has yes. been in television for a lot of years. Yes, um, and he owns it as Bale. He, he really does I, a I very good job. I love him. Uh, his style and swagger as Bale, like, you can tell this is the man who raised Princess Leia. Like, there is never a doubt in my mind that he is the person that raised Leia. Um, he, but he's also probably one of the most moral characters. Like, you never doubt what side he is going to wind up on. Um, you also never doubt that he's going to be the one to come through for his friends. Like, right. he's the one who just is, ugh, he's the absolute best. He's a leader of the rebellion. The only thing that hurts me is that in, um, Rogue One, it is confirmed that he was on Alderaan when the Death Star made it go. Which home. makes sense because it he's a senator sense. from that. He, he, he may even be a king because Leia holds the title of princess. That's so, true. it. Somebody explain to me how the royalty situation works on Andor Alderaan, Alderaan, please. Thank you. You're welcome. But um, Jim yeah. Smith's his character in Star Wars has rides such a fine line, and he does it so beautifully that it's very evident as you go through with his character development that no one in the Empire has a clue. Mm -hmm. where his allegiances lie. He is, he is the ultimate operative mm -hmm. for the rebellion and, and later on the Republic. So, Jimmy Smith's Bail Organa, number 10. Number 9, coming in at number 9, Satine Kreese. She was introduced in Clone Wars as an old friend of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Air quotes. Such big air quotes around old friend. It's not even funny. There is zero doubt that she was his girlfriend. Oh, and she was only in like nine or ten episodes, but the impact she left on the series, just, oh my goodness. She is the... Duchess of Mandalore. She is who helped us introduce Mandalorians proper into Star Wars in the Clone Wars. Right. Um, she is a pacifist. Um, her sister is Bo-Katan Kreez, who is um, played by Katie Sackhoff and making all the waves over on Mandalorian right now. But, um, yeah, uh, Satine just, she kind of just struck a chord with a lot of people um, because she was one of the few people that in Clone Wars that was just like, nope, nope, I'm not picking a side. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing it. And for many years, that was sufficient until, well, let's just say the okay. dark side, the dark side continues to manipulate, manipulate, and manipulate until there has to be a decision made. Mm -hmm. And it just, Unfortunately, her decision winds up costing her her world and ultimately her life. Her death is the first time I remember crying watching Clone Wars. I suspect that Obi-Wan was crying right alongside of him. He, he was. They, anima they animated his tears beautifully. All right, number eight. We've already kind of made mention of him a couple of times. Din Djarin. I sincerely hope I'm pronouncing that name right. But y'all might all know him as the Mandalorian. This or is the way. This is the way. Uh, he is played by Pedro Pascal, and oh my goodness, he is so cool. <laughs> like the rule of cool is what this character was made. For. And let's face it, the Mandalorian in its first season did a ex 
extremely good job of reigniting the Star Wars interest. Yeah, there was Clone Wars, there was Rebels, there's been some other things going along, but The Mandalorian really, really launched the episodic the live action of what is, is going on in the Skywalker saga time frame, anyway. Um, and Din kind of brought Star Wars back to its western roots. He is such a Clint Eastwood man in black, or man with no name, rather, mm -hmm. um, that... Oh my goodness, it's so good. He's so cool. Um, Pedro Pascal does a phenomenal job with the voice. Um, he also does a great job of kind of explaining a lot of the Mandalorian nuances that even though they were explained in Clone Wars and Rebels, they did get a little muddled because a Mandalorian was never the main character. They were always a side character or just got like one episode a season to focus. So. His story does a very good job of unpacking the Mandalore lore, mm -hmm. if you will, and propelling that into the story in ways that make absolutely perfect sense, thus providing backstory for some of the other series that have come along, Obi-Wan, Andor, etc. Book of et Boba Fett. Book of Boba Fett especially, yes. Yes, so, yes. Din Djarin, number eight. Number eight. Number seven. I think this is the only bad guy on this list. This one was hard for us because we just absolutely love this character. Yeah, he's a bad guy. In, I mean, he's never an anti-hero. He's just a bad dude and all the way through. And he loves it. He and loves, he loves it. it. Uh, number seven. seven is Cad Bane. The man in blue himself. Voiced by Corey Burton. Uh... I know Corey Burton's voice from a radio drama that I love to listen to called Adventures in Odyssey, but this man has been voice acting for decades, and the voice he gives to Cad Bane is legitimately terrifying. This is one of those characters that you love to hate. Yes. I mean, you really, and really hate do. hate to love. And, and, and when he shows up on the scene, you know something is about to happen that doesn't benefit any of our heroes mm -hmm. to any extent. Mm -hmm. But he's so... Uh, charming is not the right word no. for it, but it is the right word for yeah. it. it he, he, it's a little bit like Hondo. Enigmatic Hondo. is a great word. It's a little Cad bit like Hondo. Yeah. Hondo. Hondo. Which... Yeah. Other uh, countdown. Check uh, that one out. Yeah. By the way, if you notice that... If you feel Hondo and Rex are missing from this list, don't worry. We gushed about them in a video somewhere up here. They are exempt from our list. Because we've already told you they are our favorite They're characters. They're our favorite. Hondo! Rex! So, so, look up here. The card will be up here somewhere. Go check out that link. Uh, Cad Bane, going back yes. to, um, he is a bounty hunter, yes, correct? Yes, sir. Bounty uh, hunter. And he wears a cowboy hat. Kristen drew the, the Clint Eastwood uh, analogy a little bit about with spaghetti westerns. You can very easily see... <laughs> the influence. The influence. It, it is... Wow. And all of a sudden, I'm thinking the theme from Good, Bad, and the Ugly. Anytime wah, that... Wah, wah. Ex, yeah, anytime. Thank you, Kristen, for the soundtrack. <laughs> anytime Mandalorian or Cad Bane show up, you hear... I can't whistle very good. But, I mean, he and uh, Boba Fett literally have a duel it at is high noon. Incredible. In Fett. It is incredible. And the, and the analogies back to a space western just rain any time that Cad Bane shows up on the scene. So We love to hate him and hate to love him. With number seven, Cad Bane. All right. Number six, we already made mention of this character quite a bit as well, Cassian Andor, played by Diego Luna. He is first, he was first introduced in Rogue One, and we honestly thought that would be the last we saw of him, because, you know, Rogue One does not exactly have the happiest of endings. The hero does characters. not ride off into the sunset with the heroine no. in Rogue One. No, Sad to say. Very, very sad. Good film. Great film. It just, it, it, it kind of... Don't get attached to anybody. Let's just yeah. say that. Don't get attached but to anybody. But then Disney surprised us by announcing a prequel series for this character. And oh my word, it came out swinging and Diego Luna was a fantastic lead. Season one has been incredible with Andor, again, showing the re realism and the heartache that goes along with the beginnings of the rebellion. 
Um, the, the, the characters are so rich and fleshing out and unpacking um, Cassie and Andor as one of the titular leaders later on of the rebellion. Um, wow, it's just absolutely fascinating. Season one's available on Disney Plus. Uh, everything we hear guarantees that yeah, there will season, be a season two. Season two should start filming here soon, but as far as I know, season two is going to be its last. Um, I think they're planning on just making it a two-season show, which honestly, good plan. Right. Keep it going strong and then say, hey, go watch Rogue One. Yeah, make sure if you're keeping up with Hollywood at all, hey, writers, hey, directors, hey, whoever's involved in the whole writer's strike dispute, please come to an agreement. Please, we want to continue to keep getting quality entertainment. And you guys fussing and fighting doesn't help that. So Please, help the, the rebellion agreement. come back to us. Because Cassian is like just getting started on his journey. And goodness gracious, I cannot wait. They have a lot to do two. in season two. Yes, but it will be guaranteed to be a big one. Please reveal that Keto Loy is okay and somehow learned how to swim. Because I need Andy Circus to be okay. Cassian right. Andor was number six, number and five. now number five. We really get to some of the most endearing, non-force sensitive characters in this top five. There's some of our favorites. Of course, it's our countdown, so we get to list our favorite. They may not be yours. Again, please comment. Let us know. We love to get feedback from you. We can make Cross and Ken so much better if we hear from you. you. Thank you. For all of you who watch every week and every other week, well, every week in Star Wars in May, Month in yes. May, may the 4th be with you and the 5th, 6th, 7th, <laughs> Roll all the way to the 30th. Roll it so, on. the crew of the ghost. Now, we are cheating just a little bit because we are including four characters in this section. They are Harrison Dula, Sabine Wren, uh, Garazeb Aurelios, or Zeb, as everybody calls him, and Callus. Uh, I'm not confident on his first name. Agent. Agent Callus. Agent um, is his first name. Agent is his first name. Same as Phil Coulson. We so don't want to spoil anything for you. Go to Rebels. Go watch Rebels. Go We're watch Rebels. That a lot. And you will understand <laughs> why the crew of the Ghost is one of our top, it's number five in mm -hmm. our top non force sensitive groups. Um, there is one instance, however, two of the members of that crew are force sensitive. Mm -hmm. So they're not ones that we count. It's just those the crew, four that I mentioned. The four that Kristen mentioned. They are an incredible team. They, they're family, and like with any family, uh, unless you're just that special. That special. They fight. They fuss. They get mad at each other. They kick each other off the crew. Um, <laughs> Hera is the group mom, without a doubt. Uh, Sabine is kind of the rebel sister. Zeb is the big gun. Zeb is the muscle. Kind of the uh, the Italian uncle. <laughs> and Callus is the uh, stepchild. Yep, yep, redheaded stepchild. Callus is the redheaded stepchild who weirdly gets along well with the Italian uncle. So it's it's okay. <laughs> Watch Rebels, and you'll see exactly what we we'll, what we're talking They're about. They're all so endearing. They're all so precious. They have such great relationships with the rest of the crew: Ezra, um, Ka uh, Kanan, and Chopper. Um, as well as people that I'm not going to tell you are technically also considered part of the crew because that would be spoiling. Song number four, Lando Calrissian. Who doesn't love Lando? Ugh, our favorite smuggler, um, played by Billy D. Williams uh, in four, five, six, as well as number nine, and uh, played by Donald Glover in Solo. I believe Billy D. Williams also came back to voice Lando for a show that I'm again not telling. Um, Oh, Lando has your heart the minute we realize he's not going to punch Han on that spacewalk place. Uh, the minute Harrison Ford gives him a hug, we know we're good. Then we're not good. Then we just love him for the rest of time. Billy D. Williams has been around in Hollywood for a long time, uh, even longer than Jimmy Smith's, uh, and has been in and out of films and, and maybe a little bit of television, but he's one of those character actors that you are endeared to, regardless of the character that he's playing. He does play a smuggler and winds up being a part of the Rebellion in 4, 5, and 6. A integral role in the Rebellion. 
uh, he with blows up the second Death Star. He blows up the second Death Go Star. Go Lando. So Lando Calrissian is one of our absolute favorite characters. I love him. I love him so much. I loved him in Solo as well. A lot of people don't like Solo. We did. My only real problem with it was that the light was too dark. So Donald Glover, you did a phenomenal job as Lando, and there are still rumors that he's going to come back and do a Lando prequel. That would be phenomenal. Which I think would be great. He was probably the best cast in that film. Hey, Star Wars folks, we would love a Solo 2. Please. We liked Solo. Do it just for us. Do it just for Crossing Kings. Just for Crossing Kings. Because we know you're tuned in every week. Yes, sir. Thank All right. you. Mahalo. All right. Number three. <sighs> We're getting to the heavy hitters now. Yes, I mean, sir. Th th these probably are on everyone's top list of Star Wars characters, force sensitive or force uh, wielding, regardless. Our number three is your favorite Wookiee, Chewbacca. We love him. Yes. And, and so much of uh, Chewbacca's story gets unfleshed in the animated um, Clone Wars and Rebels. We really get some good backstory of Chewbacca and his the people. Wookiees and his people in those stories. Mm -hmm. So please, again, yes, it's animated. Yes, Don't some people are going to think about it as a cartoon. Don't write these off. Dave Filoni and his team have done an incredible job of telling Star Wars story after Star Wars story in Clone Wars, Rebels, and now Bad Batch. So, but I digress. Chewbacca. Chewbacca is Han Solo's bestie. He's his okay. armor bearer, his co-pilot, his rescuer, um, his Avenger. Avenger, his watchkeeper. Uh, Chewbacca is that friend that everybody needs mm -hmm. with a lot of hair. Mm -hmm. So also can pull your arms out of your sockets, according to Han. So don't get on his bad side. Don't get on his bad side. We love Chewbacca. Chewbacca is our number three. Yeah. Those. Uh, it He's the ultimate saying. ride or die. Yep, ride or die. He That's is good. The yep. ultimate ride or die. Okay. Space number ride or two. die. Number two. Oh, my boys. The clones. All of them. Again, we are cheating a little bit by lumping them all together as a group, but do not for a minute mistake. These boys are individuals and they are precious. We love them here at Cross and Kim. Get past Order 66. Forget it. Okay, ignore the prequel trilogy in regards to the clones. Ignore it. You, Tamara Morrison, you did a phenomenal job. I love you. But watch Clone Wars. Watch Rebels. Bad Batch. Watch Rebels even a little bit for insights on the clones. Specifically, since I already said Rex is exempt, let's go with fives. Let's go with The Bad Batch, Hunter, Echo, Omega, Wrecker, Crosshair, Tech. Got them all. Got them all. Got them all. Um, uh, oh my goodness. There are so many clones and mm, they're all so precious. Please understand too that there are a lot, there's a lot of confusion out there amongst clone troopers versus stormtroopers. The clones are not stormtroopers. You heard it here first. The clones are not stormtroopers. Th this is a hill that I will die on. I will throw hands. That is not over necessary. This. But it the clones are the clones. Again, you do need to pay attention because Order sixty six sets up a lot, sets up an incredible amount of backstory for the original trilogy. Watch the first arc in season six of Clone Wars to fully get that story. It breaks your heart. And watch the last four episodes of Clone Wars if you really wind want up as a puddle. A major motion picture. Well, a Star Wars 3.5. <laughs> um, the last four episodes of Clone Wars, I just cannot tell, say enough about. They are incredible. And the clones themselves are integral to that. Now we come to number one. You can probably guess who the number one is. If you've not guessed, then you don't Star Wars. That, that's, uh, let's be sweet. But that's probably a pretty accurate idea. Star Wars is originally three characters. Luke, Leia, Leia and, and our Han. number one. Our number one, Han Solo. He's the only of the original trinity, if you will, 
of characters who is not force sensitive. And that makes for comedic and dramatic tension all the way through the first three films. It also means he's holding his own with a pair of space wizards. The first three films in regards to when they were made. Mm. So Han Solo is our favorite character. Beautifully done by Harrison Ford. Yes. Uh, obviously in the sequel trilogy he was not as in uh, vested as he was in the originals. Harrison Ford always wanted Han Solo to die sacrificing himself for the greater good. Despite rumors that he hated the character, according to my research, it wasn't that. He just wanted, he felt Han's character arc served a heroic self-sacrifice. And Mr. Ford, if you'd like to divulge your reasonings for and how you might feel about the Star Wars universe, please comment below. Yes, our email address is down in the description. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear from you, Mr. Ford. <laughs> and look forward to that. Yes. So Dial Han Destiny Solo this summer. Han Solo is our number one non-force character. There you have it. So how did we do? Did we hit all of the best characters that are not sensitive to the force? Or did we leave a few out? Tell us down in the comments below. Be sure to like share and subscribe and ring that little notification bell so that you know next time we upload star wars month is still going strong on saturday we should have a part two to my what if so i wrote the star wars sequel trilogy and next thursday we will have our ranking of some not all will explain of the star wars live star wars television shows so join us back here next Thursday for that. And don't forget, go to the Crossing Ken Home channel on YouTube. It's got playlists. It's got all of our videos. We would love for you to go back, watch the back catalog. We've got some groovy stuff there that I really think you'll enjoy. Even if you don't love Star Wars, because that's not exactly who we're all about, except for the month of May. Yes. Fourth, fifth, <laughs> seventh, And 18th. all of the other days in between. Okay. Hey, once again, from Crossing Ken's Garage, I'm Randy. And I'm Kristen. Thanks for joining us today. We'll talk to you soon. May the Force be with you.